What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. It's your girl, A. What's up, everybody? What's up? Hope you're all having like a really great day, an amazing day. Whenever you're watching this, girl, what's up? Okay, so first of all, listen, let me just put this out here. Thank y'all all. I want to say thank you to everyone for all the comments and suggestions regarding my hair thinning. I got to send out that love because y'all gave me the love. So I want to say thank you, everyone. I didn't get back to, I wasn't able to get back to everyone because there is a lot of comments. Like that real talk last week went really well and I was really happy with that. But I wanted to make sure that I say thank you to everyone regarding suggestions, opinions, tips on my thinning hair. So I did what you guys said. I did what you guys said. I took it out of the ponytail. Now let me just put this out there. Girl, you know I'm gonna put the ponytail back, right? You know I'm gonna pull my hair back. I, it's so easy for me to just pull it back and I know that that does cause a lot of tension from what I've been told. This right here, when I tell you this is work, this style right here is work, baby, okay? This is definitely work. Let me tell y'all, let me just tell y'all. So Saturday morning, after I finished washing my face, brushing my teeth, you know, get myself together in the morning, I decided let me try something a little bit different with my hair instead of pulling it back. Now, Saturday mornings, I really don't do too much to my hair. It's more or less in a very loose ponytail. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to try something different. I'm going to try to wear it out. I really don't like it out when it's curly because I just feel like it's, it's in between stages. It's not long and it's not super short. So it's like in one of those in-between stages. And I hate being in any in-between stage with anything in life and especially with my hair. So if I'm going to wear my hair, I want it to either be super short or like at least shoulder length. Not like in between. I just, I don't know. It's the in between for me. I never was a big fan of the in between. What I went ahead and did first was I took my spray bottle of water. Now, y'all know I always say make sure it has conditioner in it. Now, that goes when I'm talking about the wig. But, girl, I'm talking about your own natural hair, too, because you keep spraying just regular water in your hair, it's going to dry it out. So, I got my little spray bottle, you know, the same one that I use for my wigs, has my conditioner in it. I start spritzing my hair with that. I don't want it to be soaking wet, but I just want to like dampen it up. And then I go and I follow it in with this product here, which is by Lotta Body. Now this is, this was the leave-in, five-in-one leave-in conditioner, but I've been used that up. I've been finished using that up. So what I use now, because I felt like it was kind of the same, is I use this right here by Lotta Body, which is the Moisturize Me Curl and Style Milk. So this is like a hair lotion. It defines curls, tames frizz, adds moisture and brilliant shine okay for all hair types so what i do because it's like a lotion it is a lotion i pump some of it in this and then i add warm water and i shake it you know and this is what i use in my curly wigs and on my also my own hair so that way it's still getting moisture but just the lotion alone would make my hair very heavy so i prefer to do it like this this is for all hair types it does say but not every hair type needs that thick of a product in their hair because of the way my hair down so I do need to put water in it and I'm pretty sure everybody could benefit from putting water in it I honestly think this is exactly what this product was the leave-in I'm feeling like it was a lot of body milk but it, it may not have been but for me this works well with water and some and some of the product and then I just shake it up and I spritz it in my hair I do this every day when I have like a curly ponytail you know because I really don't want my own natural hair to fall out plus it works well in my hair you know I do like pink lotion, but I haven't used that in years. And probably now I would probably add water to it as well. So after I spritz the water with conditioner in it, I spritz this in, I use my big detangling brush. And you know, my curls automatically form, but they don't form always to, to be like that perfect curl. You know what I'm saying? So for some of them, I do have to like, you know, tame them or train them. So I have to stand there and I'll just twirl, you know, twirl the hair around. And this is the curls that I get from twirling my hair. Now I don't do this to my entire head because God forbid I'll be there forever. But to like only certain parts of my hair will I take my hair and just, you know, take it and twirl it like so, like this. And then I'll just allow it to dry. You know, I'll allow it to dry like that. And so by the time it's dry, which probably takes like an hour for my hair to dry, if I just let it dry, air dry, because it's thinner, I'll have to, um, you know, I'll unravel some of the curls and I'll have to fluff it up. Girl, this is work. This is work. So in the morning, I will do this. I've done this for three days in a row now. I've gotten up, I've done my hair, and then, you know, I had to leave out, bring the kids to daycare. My hair, of course, is a little damp. No big deal. Then later on, you know, by the time I get back, maybe like 30 minutes or whatever, it's dry. 
So that's when I can start fluffing it up. But this is not an everyday style for me. Like, this really, really isn't. Like, it look cute and all. Like, you know, I've gotten compliments. But girl, this work. This is some straight up work right here. And I just sometimes need to go. I don't I don't want to, I don't want to just, I don't want to be standing in the mirror, doing all of that work. So it will go up in a ponytail. I will be pulling it up sooner or later. Okay, but for today's video, we got it like this. Okay, we got it like this, girl. Okay. So first of all, I also want to send prayers and love to all of those affected by Hurricane Helene. Like, this has been like a really tragic weekend for a lot of people and I am so sorry to hear about all the devastation that has been going on with families, with homes, with flooding. Like this is really, really, mother nature is something, some, it can be something terrible at times. So I just hope that everyone is safe. Take a moment out of our busy days to pray for those that have been affected by this natural um, tragedy, Hurricane Helene. I really do hope that people are able to get their lives back in order in a timely fashion. You know, I hope that they do receive the help that they, they can benefit from because there are so many things going on in this world and people really don't want to have to worry about finding a place to live, replacing things, you know, searching for their loved ones, for their loved pets. Like this is really, really like a tragedy. So all my prayers go out to all of those that have been affected with this hurricane. I pray for all of you guys. I pray for your safety. I pray for your health, okay? I pray for all of you, your families and your loved ones. And I hope that you all can remain safe and just keep God in your spirits. That's all I can tell you is just to keep God in your spirits and this too shall pass. I was really upset when I read about the devastation and also when watching it on the news, it's really hard. It's just really hurtful to see people going through something like this, you know? And just take a moment out of your busy day and just pray for those who are being affected with this tragedy. So also y'all, first of all, let me just say this. I guess I'm gonna have to just work on being thinner on my own with no help, with no type of boost from any type of medication. So I did tell you guys last week that my doctor did put me back on Fetramine. Well, she didn't put me back on Fetramine, she put me on Fetramine. I used Fetramine like years ago when I went to the weight clinic, I was put on Fetramine. And it did help suppress my appetite. I also did work out. I went for daily morning walks. I did seven minute exercises in my home and I ate properly so I was able to lose the weight like I wasn't out there working out like like crazy because that ain't me but I was able to lose the weight and I was really happy at the weight that I had lost so about a week and a half ago you know I was put back on well two weeks ago I was put back on the fetramine and when I spoke to you guys it was like a week a week a little bit over a week that I had been using it and um I started feeling really weird like a couple days later after I did my real talk I started feeling really lethargic nauseous just weak and like slow moving and this was like after a couple of hours after taking the fetch meat. you know when i first took it when i first got up in the morning you know i was i was vigorous i was energized i was ready to go you know i got myself together i took the kids to day parent school and then when i got back home you know i took my fetch meat pill did what i needed to do and within a couple of hours i started noticing that i started feeling like kind of like weak kind of shaky a little bit tired and then i also started noticing like later on a couple of days later how i just was in like a mood i felt like i didn't want to do anything I, I started finding myself sitting at my desk like what am i going to do i don't want to do this i don't want to edit i don't want to be bothered i don't want to be bothered with youtube i don't want to be bothered with a lot of things and i got in my bed and i just moped in my bed for like hours okay on this one particular day and I was also in my bed because I wasn't feeling that great. I felt nauseous. I felt very uninterested in eating anything. I just felt really lethargic and weak. And so as I'm laying in my bed trying to regain my composure, these are the thoughts that I'm having. Until I realized, like, this has to be the medication. This spectrumine is making me feel, I don't want to say depressed, but it was making me feel, like, sad, hopeless, and also very sick, nauseous. And I wasn't interested in eating anything, like, at all. And I know you do need to eat to properly um lose weight and also to burn fat so i decided i couldn't take it anymore i just, just i stopped taking it and within the next day i felt a whole lot better not only did it make me feel these these symptoms but remember what i was saying it dries your mouth out like it makes your mouth very dry and i was used to this feeling when i used to take fetramine years ago but i was able to work around that you know i chewed gum i had mints this time around it was like dry but 10 times more drier 
And when I first experienced, when I tell you guys, it was, my mouth was so dry, the inside of my lip was sore. I started getting sore, I sore in, inside in my inner lip. I had Vaseline upon Vaseline on hand, gum, peppermints, I did everything. Drank so much water, so I nearly pissed my damn self. Like it was, it was a lot. I was going through a lot within this short period of time of taking these pills. And I just realized like, you know what? I thought I would be able to handle it because I was, I was doing really well on Fetronine a few years back, like five, six years back. And this time around, it, it didn't work for me. It did not work for me. The way it made me feel was just like the worst ever. And for all of that, I was like, Drew, I'd rather just stay fat. I'm not about to put myself or my body through anything like this. So I'm gonna just go ahead and work out on my own. I really don't know why I needed the Fetramine because it does not help you lose body fat. Like it will help you lose 5% of your body fat by itself. Like if you don't do anything else, it's not gonna help you shed pounds. It's just gonna suppress your appetite. And for a person like me who barely eats every, anyway, like I don't need anything to suppress my appetite. Like I eat like one to two meals a day. So I don't really need anything to suppress my appetite. I need to gain focus and make sure that I need to do what I need to do for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like stop eating late at night, stop eating junk food when you do, you know what I'm saying? Eat properly. This is what I need to do. I don't need any medication to get me to that point. I would like to take it, but you know what? I'm going to just do me and I'm going to just continue to go on my walk and work out my little seven minutes without the help of fetching me. Girl, that shit had me feeling so bad. Like when I tell you it had me feeling really, really bad, I felt so bad after a few days of taking it, but I just continued. And when I tell you my mouth was so sore inside from being so dry, you could hear my lip, like my mouth, like my mouth was so dry. You know how you can, you can, I, I don't know what it was, but you, it sounded like my, you could just, you could hear the dryness when I was talking. You could hear the dryness. So I'm done with that. I will do this on my own without the help of anything. Straight up. I'm going to just do this and I am who I am and I'm going to be who I'm going to be. If I don't lose all the weight like I would like to, I know eventually I'm going to get there. And it is what it is. But anyway, other than that, I hope y'all all have like an amazing day. But also, as far as last week's Real Talk, it went really well. I was glad that we was able to get a lot of opinions out there, not just for myself, but for those that I was speaking on in the email. One particular comment really stood out to me. Um, Mothership um, is the name of the person. So I guess she was particularly pissed off with my entire video. She probably is new to my channel. That's okay, neither here nor there. This is, this is what I'm gonna say like this, okay? Now I try to keep everything professional and not even professional this is my opinion and this is me i'm gonna be for real i'm gonna be me and i also do try to keep it somewhat professional because i don't want to come off as being rude to anybody but girl listen everybody have their petty moments everybody have their petty days okay i try not to let allow anybody to get me out of character because some of y'all just really ain't worth my time my energy or none of that bullshit like straight up and i'm pretty sure y'all feel that way about people in your lives too but girl there's one particular young lady woman whoever by the name of Mothership. So like I said, she might be new to my videos, but did she make it her point to leave me a comment? Like, I don't know about y'all, but I really don't go out of my way to leave a comment on a video that I particularly do not like. I just don't, that's just me. If I don't like the video, I just carry on. I'm not about to leave you a comment and tell you that I don't like the video. It was like, you are taking up more time. Did she write, came here just to give you a thumbs down and said, I won't be subscribing. You spent 20 to 30 minutes talking about nothing related to the title of your video talking fast and wasting time with irrelevant stuff okay now first of all and she got five thumbs up for her her comment okay oh and i gave her one too a six and then i left her a little comment now first of all it's called real talk now if you don't really know me we talk about all kind of shit on real talk and it's, it's, it goes about the topic too but we started off with talking about what we did for the weekend what we've been going through you know what i'm saying like if y'all really want me to jump right to real talk and not say shit then i could do that too i could not say shit but if you don't like it then you could either exit the fuck off or you could speed through the video but leaving dumb shit like i'm gonna give you a thumbs down really that shit was irrelevant i don't really give a fuck about none of that shit i don't really care if you're not subscribing bitch i don't really care if you don't even watch the video okay anymore you can exit the fuck off okay along with the five people that agree with you now what did i talk about that was irrelevant it might have been irrelevant to your fucking ass but obviously it was irrelevant to it was relevant to a whole lot of people because what i was talking about people were commenting on regarding thinning hair and lifestyle choices so whether mothership it was relevant to you or not girl your thumbs down and your unsubscription don't mean a goddamn thing to me and i hope you're watching this video so that way you can know that i don't really give a shit
So I just really had to put that out there because some of y'all really feel like it's okay to write dumb shit. And it is okay. You can write whatever the fuck you want to write, but just realize that people like myself and other people are going to respond whatever the fuck they want to respond with. And that's just on period, okay? So yeah, like, and if you don't like the video, if you know when I go back to start talking about the real talk this speed, do that shit. But I'm not about to change who the fuck I am and I'm not about to change what I do for one person or five people. If you don't like it, get the hell off the video and continue on with your day. Got me up here thinking that I'm talking to like a bunch of kids and shit, like I gotta please every fucking body. It's called YouTube, you, okay? And you, do you, boo, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to the real talk, okay? Because I do actually have one that stems from last week's video. Um, It was a reply, I guess, is that what you wanna call it? To the video about HIV being contract, um, contracting HIV. So I do have a email regarding that. And then I got this other email that was real scandalous, girl. Like seriously, super duper scandalous. I'ma leave that one for last, okay? So we're gonna just jump right into this real talk. If you want a real talk about yourself, your life, your friends, whoever pissing you the fuck off, you can send me an email too. Month is my lovers2012 at gmail.com or April's real talk at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line real talk so that way I know it's a real talk. And on that note, let's just jump into this, okay? So he subjected, titled, excuse me, important, regarding Wednesday's real talk, I was groomed. So at first I was like, I was groomed, and we weren't talking about being groomed. Listen to this. Good morning, Miss April. I pray all is well when you're reading this email. You can call me Gregory for this email. I am a 42-year-old man who resides in Florida. First, I want to thank you for reading my, my, my email. And I did subject it with important because of your real talk on last Wednesday regarding HIV. Mrs. April, a lot of these women out here do not realize that a lot of these men who are giving out diseases are men who have participated in same-sex acts and have also been imprisoned. I wanted to share my story with you. As a 42-year-old man, I spent a lot of my life imprisoned as well for things I am not proud of. But you know, you do the time, you do the crime. You do the crime, you do the time. Okay. I spent a total of 18 years in prison not multiple times, but my first and final bid was 18 years. During the time I spent there, I have seen so many disturbing things that will make the average person cringe. Mrs. April, I was groomed my first few years in prison because I wasn't tough. I wasn't a fighter like that. I just ran with a crowd who was in reality, I was nothing but a punk wearing grown men's clothing. I was groomed to become another man's boyfriend. And as much as I tried to fight back, I couldn't. My groomer made me do things that was against what I believed in at the time, like men on men sex, unprotected sex, because who's giving out condoms in prisons, right? My groomer was an older man who also protected me, taught me how to carry myself in jail, and also became the love of my life. I know you're probably in shock from hearing this, but this man held me down, made sure I had everything I needed from food, clothing, hygiene, protection. He did everything for me at the time. He did get released before me by only a year. And yes, we did keep in touch and still see one another to this day. But here is the part you need to understand. When he got out of prison, he went home to his wife of so many years and went home to her like he was still that same heterosexual man he was when he first went in 25 years prior. To this day, he hasn't told her. And to this day, he and I still see one another. Mrs. April, what I'm trying to say is 
There are so many men on the down low due to being imprisoned, due to being groomed. And these are the same, and these are some of the men who get out of prison and still try to live up to society standards and be with women. Women who they are infecting with HIV and other trans sexually transmitted diseases. I know this for a fact because there are a few men in prison who I knew of and knew personally that was infected with HIV and one who I knew who had AIDS. These men don't want to tell their truth. They don't want to tell their story and be honest. They prefer to live in their lives. You are correct with calling Department of Health on a person who is knowingly giving out diseases. There is a fella who was in prison with me. He did a 10 year bid, you know? Well, he and I was a couple cells apart. He was sitting play checkers and cards with us. And a lot of times he and I would just vibe and conversate. He spoke to me in confidence one Sunday about him having HIV and no one knows he's been living a secret life and doesn't want anyone knowing he's secretly gay. I asked him, did he inform anyone who he was sexing that he was infected? He said he never told, but war protection. I thought he was wrong for not telling. And Mrs. April, when I one day saw him trying to hit up on a, a fellow inmate who was gay, I had to warn the guy not to fuck with him because he got something you don't want to catch. And I left it at that. So what I'm trying to say is, yeah, these men are secretly giving it out, HIV, and not living in their truth. Thank you for your platform and hearing me out. Please be safe out there and careful because you really don't know who you're sleeping with, Gregory. So y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. I read it. Y'all heard it. Now for one, y'all heard it. That's, that's, a, that's the most I could say. Like, I really don't know what to say. Like, first of all, you know something? I have heard stories like this, like, you know, watched it in movies. I have never experienced being able to speak to someone that has told me this. And even though me and Gregory weren't able to verbally speak to one another, the email was a conversation in itself. Okay. Like seriously, the email was a conversation in itself. It's sad when you can get this type of email from someone who's already been prison, in prison and tell you the 411, the info on what goes down in prison prison now i don't really want to say that i'm disgusted by what i read because i am somewhat but i also do feel like gregory you are like playing a huge part in this entire fiasco that you call a relationship you you got yourself a boyfriend who you met in jail who became the love of your life because he groomed you now i don't really know too much about grooming because i was in jail for two weeks and it was the county jail it wasn't like no fucking prison i wasn't sent on no bus i was the local county jail and two weeks was enough for me okay well nobody trying to groom me when nobody trying to get at me sexually when nobody trying to do none of that shit okay when i came out i went back home to my kids you know what i'm saying and my husband it was it was like that okay but the part where gregory explained how men are in there having sex with each other and then they're getting out and they're going home to their wives their girlfriends or to whoever and not saying nothing that part really disgusted me like okay i don't know about y'all but doing a bid in jail the last thing that's on my mind is fucking having sex with nobody i'm sorry but if i go in there a straight man i'm gonna come out a straight man if i go in there a straight woman i'm gonna come out that motherfucker straight woman i'm not gonna allow anybody to just groom me and do those type of things but like gregory said he wasn't no fighter but see how we gonna fight today because I'm not about to let you stick nothing nowhere. It don't fucking belong. Now, he did say that this man ended up being the love of his life. He's older than him. He became the love of his life. He protected him. He made sure he was fed. He made sure he had his hygiene products. He made sure, okay? That's what he fucking did. He made sure. So he became the love of his life. Now, when you say these things, and I read this email, the first thing that's going through my mind is a TV show that I used to like to watch, which is called Prison Break. Now, I remember the one guy in there, they called him Teabag or whatever. He had a boyfriend and they would always make them hold their inner pocket. They would pull out their inner pocket and hold, make them hold their inner pocket. This is what I've seen on TV shows, okay? This is what I'm visualizing. I'm not really sure if it's really, really like that. Like, I don't know, I don't know the process and the steps to grooming somebody, but I'm gonna just say this. You're not about to groom me. We're gonna fight. We're gonna fight like it ain't nobody business. And when I get out this motherfucker, when I do my bid, they're gonna be like, why you look like that? You got cuts and bruises. Cause bitch, I had to fight my whole entire time while I was in it, okay? Well, nobody about to groom and groom me. Oh, hell to the fucking no. Now he got, he's talking about men and getting out. They giving women diseases. And like, maybe, 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 maybe jails should just start giving out condoms because shit is happening like especially to men because do women groom women in prison i don't know because men are the one with the part that can penetrate women don't have anything to penetrate 
so do to do, do, do they give out condoms to women like i don't really think a condom for a woman is going to do too much maybe there's one for their tongue i don't know but i'm just saying being in prison is already a fight i don't understand why people want to have relationships with same-sex people in prison like are you really that desperate and bored that you decide that i'm going to be i'm going to sleep with men because i want a relationship that bad hell fucking no you should focus on doing right and doing what the fuck you need to do while you're in jail now we got lies and stories gregory you lying too gregory talking about men coming out of jail and doing things to women and keeping secrets because they don't want people to know about their secret lives but you're doing the same thing gregory you got your boyfriend your jail boo who you've been with who took care of you who looked out for you he done got out of jail before you and went home to his wife and he's still fucking with him when you get out you don't feel like you are playing a huge part to this whole fiasco of fucking in jail and then getting out and still living a lie you live in a fucking lie too you are still you are living a fucking lie too okay now why do i say you live in a fucking lie because you still fucking this man that lives with a woman i'm sorry but if i was in a gay relationship I, if i was in any relationship I would be upset to find out that my my spouse, my partner, is living with a, another person that they fuck. Like that would that would make me feel good about anything. Okay, what do y'all agree on? Like, do y'all agree to tell his wife? Because what y'all really need to do is tell his wife, or maybe not you, Gregory, but he does. Or if he doesn't want to, then maybe you need to put your foot down, break things off, and move forward and move on in life and find you somebody that's for you. Now, I don't know if Gregory is living a life like a lie about him being gay. I don't know if he's came out to it because he didn't go in there that way. Okay, he didn't go in there, but he did say that's the love of his life. So you know what? If Gregory said that this man is the love of his life, I guarantee you, Gregory is living his gay life. He is living in his life. He is living in it. Okay, he ain't hiding shit because he said this man is the love of his life. And when somebody is the love of your life, you show that shit. You show that shit. Now, Gregory's boyfriend ain't saying that shit. I don't know, maybe Gregory's boyfriend is. But to me, it doesn't seem like he is because he's living a lie. They both living a lie. Now, the one thing that I do want to talk about is the one guy that was a couple cells away from Gregory in jail that Gregory would play checkers and cards with, like he said, and that he and the guy would just con converse. And on that particular one Sunday, they had a conversation and this man told him that he had HIV, but he also was trying to fuck with somebody else in the jail, okay? And he wasn't sharing his, his status. He wasn't about to share status. He said he wore protection. He wasn't sharing his status though. Okay, so you wore protection out in the world. You don't wear protection in the jail because Gregory said they don't give out condoms, okay? So we already know that they wasn't getting no condoms. But the fact that this person that already had a disease wanted to go fuck with somebody else in the jail and he wasn't about to tell his business to is diabolical that shit was diabolical that was deceiving diabolical evil wicked and just disgusting okay a disgrace okay like how do you know you have well shit they do they do why am i even asking that dumbass question because what i was about to say is how do you go around sleeping with people and you know you got something but they do people do some people be so ashamed to tell their truth some people be so embarrassed to say well hey i got herpes hey i got hiv hey i got syphilis hey i got all kinds of shit people be embarrassed but the embarrassment is the aftermath because you're going to be even more embarrassed if the person finds out and puts you on blast okay put your ass on blast Everybody go through a situation. Everybody go through shit in life. There are people that are going through the same shit that you are going through while you're watching this video. Okay, I don't know what you can be going through while you're watching this video. And I'm talking to you divas and divos. But I'm, I guarantee you, whatever you are going through in life, there is somebody else that is going through the exact same thing. So never be afraid and ashamed to divulge what you're embarrassed, what you are going through in life, what you may have contracted, because you are risking other people's lives by not sharing with them. I'm not saying get on the internet and tell everybody, oh, I got HIV or I got syphilis. I'm not saying that, but when you meet up with somebody and you're about to have a relationship with them, whether it be a one night stand relationship or an ongoing relationship, you owe it to that person to tell them what you're going through, okay? Whether it be a, um, a, a disease, whether it be an eviction i don't know because that eviction they might get help you but you do you owe it to the person to let them know what you are going through especially if it's something that's really not that great and it's negative then i would definitely want to share and then again maybe it's not your time to be in a relationship i just feel like this man who doesn't want to share his status his health status doesn't deserve to be in any type of relationship and from the looks of things hopefully they remove him and i would like to know if gregory told because he did tell the one guy, you don't want to fuck with him because he'll give you something that you can't catch. Don't just tell the inmate that. Then you tell the counselor that at the jail, the warden. So that way you can get him isolated. Because if not, he's going to just go around dicking everybody and giving every, everybody some shit. Gregory, I do appreciate you sharing your story with us. 
and what things have been do gone on behind closed bars. But you also need to share your story with the person that it matters to, which is your boyfriend and his woman. Because y'all are being real deceitful to this woman. Meanwhile, he's sitting up in her face on a daily, loving her or pretending to love her. You know what I'm saying? Shower her with love and marriage and just being a husband. Meanwhile, he lived a double life. Like, where's that okay at? Understand what I'm saying? Like, these men, they go in there, they humping each other. Then they get out and they just living like like ain't nothing happened. Like, they get out of jail and don't act like nothing went down in jail. Like, y'all know damn well y'all was fucking in there. And then you get out and you go to your wife, your kids, your fiancés, your woman, your girlfriend, and you act like nothing ain't never happened. Like, listen, live in your truth and do what's right. Do the right fucking thing. Don't be out here lying to folks. Don't be out here acting like you've been holier than thou when you know damn well you haven't. Like, and the one thing that I can tell you, ladies, when you are in getting in yourself into a new relationship, like I said before, make sure you investigate because you really don't know who you're sleeping with. Just like Gregory said at the end, you don't know who you are sleeping with, so be safe. And that is the truth. You really need to put in the work of investigating another person because people can tell you something until you blue in the face go in one ear and out the other they can tell you they're this they're that they're this they're that and in reality they ain't none of that shit they are none of that shit that they claim to be and they are out here doing shit like giving people diseases call the department of health go to the department of health just like gregory says you can but i'm kind of like disappointed with you gregory because you are the one that shared the story but you are doing shit that ain't helping either i really feel like if you really love this person your boyfriend of jail your jail boo your jail boo your jail bay then i really think that you guys need to do the right thing this woman is living her life with your j uh, jail bay and she don't know nothing she don't know nothing you know what's so crazy though and i don't really know if it's if older women are doing this but i think i mentioned this before one time like a couple of times i was on tiktok right and it was tiktok live and you know i just scroll and i and i had to stop scrolling and go back because i was like what the hell and yeah so it was inmates in prison they were in a cell they was on live of the tick they was on live tiktok talking to females you know in the live you can read the comments so i just sat back and i was just really intrigued by everything that was going on this was interesting to me so i just sat there probably for like 30 minutes and i just was reading the comments and just looking at the interaction the interaction with one another that the inmates had with the women in the comments and i was just like amazed because there are so many men in jail and the fact that these women flock to them like they flock when i say they flock like it's not that you met them before they went to jail but they're already there and y'all are trying to get with them i don't understand for the life of me i'm trying to figure out why would you want to get with somebody that's in jail already like you didn't even know them in the outside world but you want to get with them on the inside like you don't know what this person has done to get in jail they can tell you anything they can tell you anything but you don't even know what they be doing while they in jail just like gregory said they do these shits and then get out give diseases to their women when they get home do you guys need like a fucking hobby or some shit like but i'm sorry but there's no way what i would want to be on somebody's live that's got on a jail suit and he's got his homeboys in there and I wouldn't want to try to get with them. Like, why would you want to get with them? Why would you try to get with them? Like, these women were really shooting they shot. Like, they was really shooting they shot at these dudes. And I was just like, they got, they, they had like quite a few up in here. There was a couple thousand women on their live. You, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, well, damn, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So, like, y'all are, some of y'all are flocking to these men that's in jail, but you don't even know what they got. Just like Gregory said. Like, listen, I can understand if you've been with them for a minute and then they got arrested and went to jail, but no. Y'all trying to get with them when they in jail. Like, y'all don't got no fucking hobbies. Go find something to do. Go go, go volunteer some fucking way. Go get a second job. Go go, go learn how to knit or some shit. But just do something. But don't do the live jail TikTok. Like, girl, I was just like, are these people fucking bored? I, I don't understand. I was with somebody that was in jail. My husband, you know, I didn't meet him there. We met at work, okay? That's where we, we met. And yeah, I did go visit him when he was my husband. Because let me tell y'all. There's no way I'm going to meet you in jail and get with you. I'm not about to give you all of that faith in my time. That's just too much energy that I'm not going to put into that I'm going to put into somebody. That's like taking care of a, a grown kid, like an adult child. You know what I'm saying? What I'm just disgusted is the fact that men are really doing this in jail and then coming home. Like, I don't really care what you do in jail. If this is what you want to do while you're in jail, that's your business. That's fine. Who am I to say? Who am I to judge? But the fact that you get out of jail and then want to go and spread the love like that to people that don't deserve it, it's totally just disheartening. It's disgusting. It's just totally disgusting.
you know what I'm saying? Y'all need to do y'all investigation when it comes to dating. Like straight up, do y'all investigation because like Gregory said, you don't know who you're sleeping with. Like men can get out of jail and they could they can even tell you they weren't in jail. You 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 may not even know. They might not even share that information with you that they just got out of prison or they were in prison for XYZ amount of time. You know what I'm saying? You you might not even get to know that much about a person. So that's why you have to investigate. Because the person that you're sleeping with, you could be sleeping with a whole lot of people. That one person, you could be sleeping with a whole lot of people that they slept with. You know what I'm saying? So you really need to do your due diligence and investigating and finding out who the person really is. I really appreciate though the fact that Gregory shares his story, but I do hope that in the long run that Gregory realizes that he is promoting the toxic relationship. And yeah, the dude might have been his savior, but he also groomed him. Like, who the fuck are you to go grooming somebody and making them do something against their will? Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not for the bullshit. And like I said, I will be fighting my life. With, like, I, look, I will fight for my motherfucking life, like straight up. I think a lot of times people make certain situations worse for themselves, harder for themselves. But I do hope that you live your life to the fullest and honestly as well, because what you and your your jail bay are doing to his wife is really not cool it's not cool it's not nice it's not cool it's disheartening it's disgusting and it's disrespectful and i feel like you both need to come clean listen i all be i'm all for doing the right thing and be a better person we're gonna move on to the next so this is the one that i said was kind of ratchet like this email when i read this shit i was like wow like you know what I'm saying like i don't agree with everybody it's agree to disagree okay and just because you write me an email don't mean i gotta fucking agree with you all right just straight up sometimes you really need to hear a bold a blunt fucking opinion all right so let's read this real talk no no title just real talk real talk good evening april i pray you are also having an amazing day as you always tell us my name is luna i write to you today because i'm having an issue with life and people and family and friends I recently found out I'm pregnant, and yes, I will be having this child, which will be baby number two for me. The issue I'm having is with my new child's father, whom has been telling me for months that he is leaving his girlfriend to be with me, which I have yet to see. Now, I know you're going to cheer, but my child's father is boyfriend to my so-called best friend, whom I have been friends since childhood. We are now in our very early 30s. I know what you're going to say, but their relationship has been flawed for years now. She's been trying to break up with him as... She tells me, and he has been wanting to leave her also. He and I have been messing around a little over two years. He practically is at my home most of the time. Me and my best friend, we speak about three times out the week because she works many hours at the hospital, so she's always busy working. She has no children, so she works a lot. He's been saving her money to buy her house. So that is the reason why she doesn't really miss his whereabouts, and he and I can get to spend time together. I know I am not the best best friend and I have a nerve to even be worried about their breakup, but I feel like their relationship was been falling apart or rather more apart and I am really tired of being the side chick. I know I need to tell my friend, let her know what has been going on, but how do you tell someone that has trusted you their entire childhood life that you have been fucking their man and are pregnant? I know I am wrong for what I have done, but I do love him and I do love my friend, but I deserve happiness just like my bestie does and him as well. I grew up in an unhealthy environment and there are so many people that have come and gone in my life and I would hate to see my best friend walk out of my life. How do I keep her from unfriending me, Luna? So y'all seen that email, y'all heard that email. Luna wanna know how she keep her best friend from unfriending her because she know her friend gonna probably unfriend her because she's sleeping with her best friend's man, but she not just sleeping with her best friend's man. He be over there chilling at her house. They have been messing around for two years and she also pregnant to her best friend's man. But she asking me, how does she keep her from unfriending her? Luna, why the fuck you think I would know how to keep your friend from unfriending you? Because if you were my goddamn friend and you did that, girl, you lucky you pregnant because I would probably want to put the paws on you because you knowingly fucked my man and you have him over at your house and said that she works many hours so that way, you know, she doesn't worry about her man's whereabouts because she's too busy working. But you worry about his whereabouts. You the one that's going to keep him busy, right? Mm. First of all, you're not really no friend. I'm gonna just, let's just put that the shit the fuck out here. You're really not no friend. Because if you was a friend, you would have never fucked her man in the first place. You wouldn't even gave him that type of interest in you. He would have never even been interested in you, but you gave him something that allowed him to feel like it was okay to come knocking on your door, calling you, and come giving you the business, okay? Whatever you did, you made him aware that it was okay to do so. And now you're wondering how to keep your friend from unfriending you? Girl, listen, you better worry about how to keep your friend from beating your ass. That's the main thing. I don't think she's going to ever be your friend again. It doesn't matter if you've been friends from childhood. 
that doesn't really matter because you have done the ultimate. You not only just slept with her man, you entertained her man, you slept with him, but you are having a baby with her man and said you're gonna keep that baby. Listen, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't tell anybody what to do with their body because that's not my business. You do what you feel is great for yourself. But the one thing that you ain't gonna do or gonna have is a friend anymore. She's not gonna be your best friend anymore. I guarantee you. And if she is, then kudos to her, okay? But there's no way that I would still want to be your friend knowing that you fuck my man and are having a baby with him. And then you wanna still be friends and then y'all gonna be in a relationship still. And I'm gonna have to see y'all smile on each other's face, be on Instagram or with Facebook or whatever, posting up pictures with your belly big and my, my ex-boyfriend rubbing you up. Girl, fuck no. That girl don't wanna be your friend no more. What you did was the ultimate. That was real fucked up. Like, how do you call yourself somebody's best friend when you open up your legs to their man? Like, let's just be for real. Let's just really be for real. Y'all been friends since childhood. And you know there are a dozen men out here. There are many men. There's a whole fish pool of sea of men to go grab. Girl, you could even go online on, on TikTok and find your man. Maybe even one that's not taken at the moment. You ain't really got to worry about his whereabouts because he's always going to be where he's at for the time being, which is in jail. You could get you a pen pal and make you a whole relationship with somebody in jail. But yet and still, you decided to fuck with your bestie boyfriend. Some of y'all really don't understand the word meaning friend. Some of y'all really don't understand the word meaning close your legs and keep them fucking close. Some of y'all really don't understand what desperation means and pick me means. Because Luna, you were desperate and pick me -ish. Now, I know what you're going to say after hearing this deal talk. I shouldn't have told her. That's probably what you're going to say. But you already knew that I was going to say something smart to you. What I look like sitting up here talking about, well, let me give you some really good advice on keeping her your friend. I'm not about to do that. What I am going to tell you to do is be honest with your friend. Because you done did all of this for over two years behind her motherfucking back. And now you're about to have a baby. I don't even know how far along you are because you didn't say. But you waiting for your... I don't, I don't even want to call him your boyfriend because he's really not your boyfriend. He's somebody else's boyfriend. But you're tired of being a side chick. Bitch, you are the side chick. You are the motherfucking side chick. You are the side chick. You're not the main chick. You are the side chick. You are on the side. You are in the back, okay? that You are hidden. He doesn't know. She, nobody knows that y'all are dating. So I don't know if you want to call it the side because we can normally see it's on the side. If we put her in the back behind something, we can't see that. So you are the behind closed doors chick. That's what the fuck you are. Nobody knows about your relationship because on the side, you can see a side. This shit is on my side. I can see that. Okay. What's in back of me, I can't see. Okay. So you're the back, you're back chick. You're back chick. Okay. Back burner chick. That's what the fuck you are. What you really need to do is grow some fucking balls and talk to your friend and make sure that you tell her the business. You waiting for her man to tell her that he don't want to be with her anymore. So what did you think when he was going to break up with her? And then y'all was going to get together and y'all was going to live happily ever after. Who's your baby father? How would you want to explain who your baby father was to your bestie if she had, if, if, if he just broke it off with her and never told her that y'all was messing around? Now, see, even if he does break up with her, you're going to have to be a real human being and you're going to have to tell her you are pregnant. So I hope see a man out there. What you need to do is go fucking with somebody else's man. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't find that attractive. I don't find that cutesy. I don't find that demure or mindful when people are out here fucking up relationships or fucking on somebody that's in a relationship. Now, that'd be one thing if you didn't know. That's why I say do your investigation. But Luna knew. Luna know what the fuck she's doing. Okay. And so what if your best friend told you that she was trying to break up with him? It's not your place to go opening up your legs to him just because that's what she told him. That's not what you do. And just because he told you he don't want to be with her no more. First of all, men that are in relationships or in marriages, they always tell the backs burner bitch, the back burner bitch that they don't want to be with their wives. They're trying to get a divorce or they're trying to break up with them. They always tell the back burner bitch that. That's what they always tell them. And for some fucking strange reason, the back burner bitch always believes it. She be so giddy and believe and so like just so naive that they believe this shit. Throw some balls and stand up on her two feet and talk to her best friend. You guys are probably not going to be friends anymore. I don't have any advice of how to keep anybody your friend because this is me as a person. When I realize that someone has done something treacherous to me or has disrespected me and we and, and we are friends and you continuously talk shit or been disrespect me, disrespectful to me on a couple of few times and I'm going to dead you as a friend. I'm going to unfriend you. That's what I do. I don't stick around for friendships that I know are not going to last. Granted, I did for the time being that I did have my friend, but after a while yeah i don't unfriend you especially if you continuously do disrespectful shit so i don't really have any advice on keeping a friend that you did totally wrong okay what you did was totally wrong it, it, it's it's past wrong 
you don't even deserve a best friend anymore. Hopefully, your best friend is able to regain her composure of not going upside your head. Now, me, myself, if I was your best friend, because you're pregnant, I'm not going to put hands on you, but I would want to. But, you know, sometimes the best thing to do to people is to not beat them up, is to not disrespect them, but to just walk away from them and never fuck with them again. That right there can destroy and hurt a person to the utmost. And I hope that Luna's best friend has the encouragement and the courage just to walk away from the both of them and to realize like neither one of them is no good for her healthy life. You understand what I'm saying? Like I understand that Luna was the one that wrote this to me. We really did like some real whole shit. And I'm gonna just be honest and say that because it was some whole shit. Like when you have a best friend, be best friends. This is your friend since childhood. And the thought that you could allow a man to come in between you guys and make you guys become unfriends is like ridiculous. Like, cause they're gonna become unfriends. Like what best friend in their right mind is going to be okay with their best friend sleeping with their man and becoming pregnant from him? Like what best friend is gonna be okay with that? If she is okay with it, she really needs to do a whole lot of soul searching for herself. Because in my right mind, I would just walk away from the both of you and never speak to you again. I don't give a fuck if you've been friends since day one. We not no more. The one thing that you do need to do, Luna, is you need to be a woman. You need to be real about what you did and you need to talk to your friend. I don't even really want to call her a friend anymore to you because what you did was so unfriendship. Like that was really unfriendly, very unfriendly. I just can't believe that she wrote me and asked me how to keep her as a friend. Girl, usually just wrote me and asked me how do I tell her. Fuck asking me how to keep her as a friend because that shit is not going to happen. But you should ask me how to talk to her. You need to have a conversation with your friend. For real. Because if you allow this to keep going on, then you really are evil and diabolical. And I'm just going to say it like that. But you really need to have a conversation with your friend. You need to make a date of when you guys can sit down and have a serious talk. I wouldn't even involve him. But I would let him know that I'm going to have a talk with her and I'm going to because I can't live with myself. Maybe you can live with yourself, maybe you can, but you really do need to have a combo with your friend because how you did her and what y'all did to her is so horrible. That was horrible. And like, what I just say, people be embarrassed. People be embarrassed. Sometimes you need embarrassment. Sometimes you need shame because if you have these things that maybe you won't continuously do the things that you done did to be bring, to have brought you shame and, sh and embarrassment. Maybe that's what y'all need to do. Maybe y'all need to be embarrassed. Maybe y'all need to have shame because a lot of y'all do shit and don't realize like, yeah, I need to have some type of shame. I need to have some type of embarrassment because if I don't, then I'm going to just do the same dumb shit again. Embarrassment and shame allows people to see where they went wrong and stop doing the dumb shit. And Aluna, what you did, girl, it's so hard to find good friends. You know, you have a friend and you feel like that friend is your friend because y'all been friends since y'all been kids. So you take that friendship like a lot more serious than any other friendship that you might have just made. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know the friends that I've had since childhood, those is my friend's friends. Like, we still communicate and we still, you know what I'm saying? We speak to one another. We leave comments on like social media posts. We do stuff like that. Those are my friends. And I would always want to keep them as my friends. I hold my friendship with them very important because we've been friends since childhood. But then when you have people that are in your life, you really feel like, okay, these are my friends. They're like family to me and I can trust them. And then when you realize that the trust has been broken and has been gone a long time ago, it's like, wow, you don't really know who to trust anymore. You don't know if you really want to be friends with people or you want to be in friendship with person because of shit like this. Like, I don't, I don't understand why people just make things so hard on themselves. Like, seriously, there are a million men out there and I don't care where the fuck you live at. There are men in each town, state, city, whatever, that, that are single. And you could get one of your own. And for the life of me, I can't ride along with fucking with your friend's men. Like, I just can't. You know, there's like that girl code, that girl talk. And like, even with the girl code, you can't mess with your friend, your friend's ex-man either. That is a girl code too. Now, I don't know how long that code will last for, meaning how long you cannot date this person or how, how serious is that, that code? Like, okay, she was dating him in high school, but we like in our 40s. She dated him for like a year in high school, but we in our 40s now. Would that be acceptable? I, I would think it would be acceptable. Okay. Um, but there are codes and there is respect. And like a lot of us women seem to lose respect for ourselves. And I think for Luna, that was the first thing that she lost respect for, because if she didn't lose respect for herself, she wouldn't have done any of these things. 
So Luna has just lost all respect for herself. And now she's worried about losing a friend. You know, a friendship is, is supposed to be something pure. You know, the word friend speaks for itself. And with friendship, you guys are supposed to, you know, be able to trust one another, be happy with one another, get along. So this is not a friendship anymore. I think this is a convenient ship to Looney. It's convenient for her to screw her best friend's man because her best friend is always busy. And whatever it was that Luna gave him the okay to make it all right and allowed him to approach her, she did it on her own. She walked herself into the situation. Now, me as April, I'm going to just tell you what it is. You need to do right by your so-called best friend. You need to do right, okay? Because you're having a baby by your best friend's man and you need to do right. If you cannot do right by your best friend, then you don't deserve any friends. And that's how I feel about it, period. And as far as this man, girl, he really don't give a fuck about you either or his girlfriend. Because had he cared about you or his girlfriend, then he wouldn't have fucked with you and he wouldn't have fucked around on his girlfriend. So for you to want to choose him as your second baby father is ridiculous. For you to choose your friend's boyfriend for anything is ridiculous, okay? There's no way on God's green earth would I be that desperate to fuck my friend's man while they're still together. That's desperation. That's 304 shit. That's for the street shit. Put you nothing but the best, Luna. And your pregnancy, a healthy pregnancy. But for real though, she's gonna unfriend you. And for real though, you do need to be honest with your friend and tell her what the fuck you did and been doing. Okay? And the outcome of why and what and the reasons. Just because somebody don't want to be with somebody don't make it a right for you to go sleeping with them. Bro, listen. These topics was different for me today. They really, really were. Like, I can't imagine the whole jail shit. And I damn sure can't imagine doing none of this shit to my friend. Like, I don't understand people. I guess that's why I like to keep to myself a lot of time. Because there'd be a lot of whole bunch of shit that I really don't want to be dealing with in life. And this be one of them. Like, you really don't know who to trust anymore. And this goes for everybody. Like, you really don't know who to trust and who to allow into your dwelling, into your life. Because people would... People you feel like that are close with you and have nothing but good for you, or you so you think, they be ready to have your demise for you, like straight up. They they looking on your downfall. Looney you just looking on her downfall. Gregory and his boo, his jail, his jail bay, the wife, like, I'm gonna go. This was something else. This was a real, real tricky, real talk, and I'm gonna go. I think I've I've spent enough time talking about these topics, and neither one of them made me happy. I don't really think real talk topics always make me happy, but neither one of them. Because I just feel like the both of these emails are doing shit behind other people's backs. And they don't know how it's affecting the other person or how it will affect the other person. It's just, this was too much for me. But anyway, you guys, leave your comments below for Gregory and Luna, okay? Because I want to know y'all thoughts. But thank you all for the tips on my hair and so forth. And thank you for those who let me know that the, that the Muslim oil, the Egyptian musk, it's still five dollars and three dollars and eight dollars in New York. Meanwhile, I'm up here paying twenty dollars for this little bottle. But I could, I'm gonna have to find one of y'all in New York so I can cash out and y'all can send me a supply. Okay, for real, for real. Email me if you'd like to do that with me, for real. But I love y'all. Make sure y'all rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs the video up, share it, subscribe. Check out my website, okay, for those Apple Watch bands and stackable bracelets. You know, normally I will promote my own stuff, but we had a lot to get through. But I love you guys, and I'll see y'all in the next one.